All right. And can you see my screen uh, as well? No. Not yet. But you need, in oh. Teams, you need to share a specific window. Yeah, that was why I was yeah, missing. Yeah, that's it. Uh, let's see. Cool. Can you see my Jupyter Notebook up now? Is that all fine? Yep, that's good. Thanks. All right. All right, cool. Uh, I guess we'll get started again. So Tina showed some of the the base, some basic uh, settings and stuff you can change to configure PyBAM a little bit. But I'm just going to go into a little bit more depth in some of the things you can change in a simulation. So here's what here's the list of things I'm I'm going to go over. So first of all, I'm going to give a quick description of how you actually find these settings and uh, uh, bring them up in your notebook in an easy way and also in the documentation. Then you're going to look at how you can switch away from using the, the default inbuilt parameter set that's in PyBAM and switch to, to some other parameter sets that are available. Then I'll look at how we can change a single parameter uh, value, so changing it just to a, a constant or to a function or to a drive cycle, whatever you might want. And I'm going to look at some other options for uh, on, the, on the more numerical side. So uh, you might want to change the grid points to make your uh, computational mesh a little bit more coarse so it's your simulation runs faster, or you might want to make it more fine so your simulation has more accuracy, depending on what you're afterward. And then uh, looking at how you can change the, the solver. So as Rob mentioned earlier, earlier some, of the, some of the solvers are faster, uh, but other ones are um, uh, more, more appropriate for other situations. So I'll show you how you can, um, how you can change the solver uh, using the settings and simulation. And finally, I'm just going to have a, a discussion on how we can go about adding your own parameter set into PyBAM and um, yeah, just how you would go about doing that. All right, so let's start with how you actually find the various settings you can change. So we're going to begin by just importing PyBAM, like uh, we always have to do at the start of our notebooks or any script we're using PyBAM in. And then I'm just going to, in Jupyter Notebook, you can just uh, bring up your simulation object. And if you hit Shift Tab, when you're in the, the brackets, that's going to bring up uh, the documentation. So this is the documentation that Rob showed on the the PyBAM website. So by going to uh, by going to the PyBAM repository and going into the the docs, and then we can search for the simulation object because this is what we're going to try and change the settings of. That'll bring up the simulation object. Here, and we can see here we've got a list of all the settings, but this is the same information that's also displayed within your Jupyter Notebook terminal here by just by hitting Shift and Tab. So if you hit Shift, Tab, that'll bring up uh, documentation. Uh, yeah, OK. Right, so here's a, uh, I'll just go through what the settings and what the inputs are that this sim simulation object takes. And then we'll, then we'll look at each, each one and show how you change these uh, properly. OK, so this documentation, it gives us a little overview of what the simulation object takes. So first of all, it's the model. Uh, so we've already seen that being passed in. And the, the description down here tells us that uh, has to be of class base model, a PyBAM base model. So if you put a different class in, that's going to raise an error. And then we have this set of optional arguments. So when they've got an equal sign next to it in Python, that means that the argument doesn't have to be passed in, but you can pass it in if you want to change, overwrite the de default settings. All right, so we've already saw Tino passing in an experiment object and how you can play around with that to uh, design different, uh, different um, current input profiles like CCCV and Git. But we've got these other uh, this other set of uh, inputs as well. So the first one is the geometry. So we're not really going to discuss this too much, but you can play around with the the geometry that you uh, put into the the models. Um, there's other ways of changing the geometry, so we wouldn't recommend using this one at the moment. Uh, the next one is the parameter values. So this is the uh, this is one that's going to be probably what you're going to be changing the the most. 
Uh, and we can see that that needs to be of class five amp parameter values. Uh, so we'll, we'll discuss how you actually enter those in a second. The next one, the sub mesh types, is just going to be how you're going to divide your, your, your computational uh, domain up into a discretized domain. So if you, uh, you might want to use some kind of uniform uh, mesh to, to uh, divide, divide your, um, your domain up. Or if you want it to cluster points near the edges of the particles, because that's where the most, uh, that's where the most um, uh, resolution is required, then you could do that via this option. But we're not going to discuss that because it's a little bit more technical and the default options in PyBam are already uh, uh, pretty reasonable. So we'll discuss a bit about the, the number of variable points we want to stick in. That's uh, basically controlling how fine your mesh is. There's also an option of also an option to um, choose which spatial method you want to use in your each domain. So you might want to use finite volumes or finite elements. Uh, but again, we're not going to discuss this because it's a little bit more technical and the, the defaults are, are generally work okay. The solver option uh, we'll discuss uh, as uh, Rob has already mentioned earlier. This uh, quick plot variables option it just allows you to attach a set of variables which you want the simulation to always plot every time you do sim.plot. So you can plug that into here in the simulation object when you create it. And finally, you've got this C-rate option, which allows you to um, very quickly change the current. So you might change the C-rate to 2 or something. But the just a, just a sort of word of warning is that this C-rate is just a very rough estimate of uh, what the actual C rate of the cell is. And um, we uh, would probably recommend, if you want to get an exact current, uh, that you just put the current in by changing the parameter values in a, in a slightly different way, which I'll, I'll mention in a bit. Uh, yeah. All right, so let's, let's get started by trying to change a parameter set. So I'm just going to load up a model, uh, first of all. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to use the SPME. And then once I've loaded up the model, I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to bring up a simulation object here. OK, and we can see from the documentation that to pass a parameter values into the, the this, uh, this simulation, well, it has to be of class parameter values, PyBand parameter values. So therefore, we're going to have to first create a parameter values class uh, that we're going to have to pass in, like this. OK, but to create a parameter values class, let's look at the documentation for this object now. So again, I'm just hitting Shift Tab inside each of these, uh, these brackets in order to bring up this documentation to see what we require. So this is two, this is two uh, possible arguments. You can pass either a set of values in or a chemistry. So if you pass a set of values in, uh, this requires it to be either a dictionary or a string. So we'll look at the, the dictionary option first. So we could do values is equal to uh, a dictionary. And it's going to be, for example, this might be the diffusivity that you were put associating with uh, uh, in the negative electrode or something. Uh, you'd give it some, some name which corresponds to a proper name. That's just for pure example here. And then if we print out parameter values, we see that now uh, that dictionary is now contained in the parameter values. But the class itself contains a bunch of other methods, such as uh, processing the model, processing the symbol, which are used uh, kind of under the hood. So you can't just pass the, the bare dictionary in itself. Now, you could go through uh, and write out an entire dictionary with all the parameter names and all the parameter values uh, in, in your model that are required. And that would be one way of entering a completely new parameter set. So maybe if you're just, if you're just uh, wanting to use that parameter set for your own use, uh, writing out a full dictionary like this is uh, a way you can enter your own parameter set, basically. OK. Uh, the other option with values was to pass a, is to pass a string, and that string be a path to a particular CSV file that you wanted to, to load up, then all the parameters in that CSV file would be loaded up into your parameter values set. So that's one way, another way which you could load up your own parameter sets as well. But uh, it's not the, the most recommended way, uh, as we'll discuss at the end. 
All right. So if we want to change, um, if we want to change the chemistry uh, to some of the other inbuilt, inbuilt um, parameter sets within PyBAM, uh, we're going to have to pass in this the second argument, which is the chemistry here, and that takes the form of of this dictionary. Now PyBAM has a set of uh, chemistries pre-built in it. Uh, so we got if you do pybam dot parameter sets, then this will load up the the set of parameter sets which are already available, and now we can choose one here. So we've got uh, a parameter set from from Ecker. We've got the LGM fifty cell that was uh, um, a Faraday kind of project, uh, and we've got uh, this uh, this cell here, this NCA cell from Candler Smith's paper uh, back about eight years ago or something. So I'm going to select that. And just to show you what that object looks like, um, it's three. So when I'm completing these words, I'm just hitting, I'm just hitting tab, and it'll uh, finish off the word for me if it's already evaluated within the notebook. And we can see that this 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 chemistry basically just looks like uh, uh, it tells you what the chemistry of the thing is, tells you what the cell uh, type is, tells you what uh, anode you're using, what separator you're using, what cathode you're using. Um, and I'll discuss a little bit about what these actually are referring to, these names here, these strings are referring to uh, at the end when we look a bit more at how you would add your own parameter set. Okay. So I'm just going to load this in here. Uh, like this. All right. And yeah, then as the simulation object requires, it just required a uh, parameter values input. And if we do that, we can solve, and then we can plot. Uh, so I'll just plot the terminal voltage. Voltage here. All right. So just as an aside, uh, well, that's uh, doing its thing. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Just an aside. Well, that's uh, uh, was plotting. We can uh, also, if you want to try and find different variables in your model, what you can do is uh, you can uh, you can if you set the model here first of all. Uh, hang on a second. We can just do model dot variables, and it's got a list here of variable names in your model. Oops. We just have to evaluate that because it's a method, and it tells you all the all the variables in in the model which you could pick and choose to put into this uh, to plot if you wanted. Uh, so obviously that's pretty it's a pretty big list there. So there's another way of finding finding these. You can do uh, variables dot search, and say you want to find something which is related to the voltage, you can set that. Uh, oops, that's because I deleted that. There we go, and then this um. This lists all the variables which have a voltage uh, meaning to them. So there you can see terminal voltage here, or if you wanted something related to the electrolyte, we can type that, and it tells you all the electrolyte variables possible as well. Okay, so that's a way of easily checking uh, how you find these if you forget what the units are or you forget exactly what the, the string name should be. Okay, right. That's... Uh, Okay, that's how we change a, a whole parameter set. But say you um, uh, like most of that parameter set, but maybe you want to change just the, the current or something like this. What you can do is uh, I'll first load up a, a model again. I'll create, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this down here so that I'm Doing this. Okay. Okay, so now we can see that we have our parameter values here. And yeah, so basically this is gonna show you all the parameter values by just, just typing out parameter values like this and evaluating the cell. It shows you all the parameters, all their names, and it shows you uh, the corresponding value for each of these parameters. So let's say you wanted to change the the current. So you want to change the current function. Uh, so 
as a, as a side, you can also search this, I believe. So you want to change current. And it'll give you everything related to currents as well. It's similar to how you would do with the, the variables. Um, OK, so I'm just going to change the current function here to, and I'm going to double it just to show you that this will now discharge in about half the time. So we can see that this terminal voltage is discharged in about 3,600 seconds, which is about an hour. Uh, so that needs C from below, that needs an amps units here. And I'm going to set, so we can evaluate that, we can see that's 0 0.43. And I'm going to set that to be two times 0 0.43. So this should, once we evaluate, uh, uh, we have to first create a simulation model and pass the, the parameter values in again in exactly the same way. We've just modified that dictionary above here. Uh, and then we can do sim.solve and sim.plot terminal voltage V. And yep, so now we see that this no, no, uh, no discharges in about half the time. Uh, just by changing this, this, uh, this here. Okay. But that was. You may be also interested in, you know, putting slightly more interesting function functions in than just putting a constant, constant current discharge. So, uh, I'm just going to go ahead here and recreate a model again. I'll just copy this to save as retyping too much. And let's do that. All right. So, if you want to, if you want to change this current to a function, first of all, what you do is you, uh, you'll need to know what inputs that function needs to take. Uh, so, I mean, I guess, guess for if you're changing the current, you probably think the current's only going to be a function of time. Uh, but just to double check that, because some of the other variables have more complicated inputs. Uh, you can you can look in the model. So this is specific to a model. Uh, you look at the info of the model and type in the current function. And what that does is just brings up a little bit of information about about that particular function in the in the model. So we can see that it's got this this name. It's of class uh, function parameter, and the inputs to that function are just as you would kind of expect, are just time. Okay, so now we can go ahead and create a little function, which I'm just going to call my current as a function of time. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to return uh, pybam sine of t. Okay, so you, you need to use the, the pybam dot sine t uh, because this is just a, uh, an inbuilt function. And we, we've, in pybam, we've created all the, the standard mathematical functions so that they uh, match up with the syntax in the uh, in the, or the, or the object format in Python. Okay, and now similar to what we did before, we can just uh, go ahead and now set this current function to be exactly this uh, function. You just need to give it the function name. All right, and if we do simulation equals pybound.simulation, Again, just passing these arguments in. And solving. And uh, plotting. Uh, I may want to solve for a slightly less amount of time. We'll see if it works. I'm going to plot the current in amps and the terminal voltage like this. OK, so I'm just going to stop doing that just now because basically what I'm trying to do is run that with a with a weird function uh, for too long. So I'm just going to, you can use NumPy and uh, set the amount of time that we want to evaluate for. And I'm going to just evaluate for 10 seconds. So this 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 inputs in seconds here, and I'm going to give it about 
split that 10 second interval into hundreds. And then if we look at the solve here, we can see that you know, one of the options is to pass the time evaluate, the, the amount of times, the times of which you want to evaluate at, uh, and it gives you some information about that if you're uh, interested. Uh, so there we go. And OK, so that's solved much faster. And hopefully we can see a kind of uh, current input. I'm not sure why this is taking so long. There we go. OK, so we see a, a kind of sinusoidal current going in, and then we see a sinusoidal effect on the terminal voltages as well. So that's, that's how you'd start. But you can draw these lines down in a drive cycle. So what we do is, it's again very similar. We're just going to overwrite that particular parameter value for the current. In amps. But this time, we're going to pass uh, a keyword. So anything in brackets is just a keyword, which is going to say, uh, tell you something about the format of of this particular uh, string. And I'm going to pass in a name of, of a, a drive cycle. So I'll show you where you find these drive cycles a little bit later at the end as, as well, where you find these names. Uh, and you could also add your own. Uh, so this, this, this actually is just a, a CSV file with, uh, with um, a current input through time. And you could add your own in that same location. And as long as you use the same name or use, a, use a correspond the name to whatever you've called the file, then uh, you can load it up in this way as well. And likewise, uh, we can uh, do uh, sim equals simulation model and parameter values. Again, it's very similar. The syntax each time is just the same. Solve it. it might take a little bit longer because we're doing a drive cycle. Uh, and again, I'm just going to plot the current function. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to plot the current because that's one of the variables. I'm just memorizing these, but you know you can always look through the variables, uh, model dot variables to find what, which ones you want. Uh, okay, all right. And well, that's well, that's kind of doing its thing there. Um, all right, it's done it. Good. Cool. So that might not have been fast enough for you. Um, but there's, we'll show you at the end that you can change the solvers in and out, and there's one of the solvers which is particularly quick. Um, so let's close that off. Yeah, so you can see the drive cycle kind of current going in there as well, and the effect on the voltage. And you could also plot any of the other variables as Tino showed earlier, and uh, look at and investigate those. All right, how do we change the, the grid points? Okay, so I'm going to, again, just do do this stuff relatively quickly. Uh, I'm going to completely forget about the parameter. We don't need any of the parameter values, actually, no, because we're not going to worry about that. All right. So again, if we come back to this uh, simulation object, and we press Shift Tab again, we can bring up what the, the variable points need to be. So this is just a dictionary. And this dictionary needs to have uh, Maybe this information should be a little bit more updated, but the dictionary needs to have keys which correspond to the spatial variables in each domain. So if you're in the negative electrode, you're going to have to use Xn, which of course uh, as the spatial as the sort of macro scale dimension. And if you're in the the particle, you'd use Rn, the radial direction of the particle. So first of all, we rolled up uh, we have rolled up the the variables. So you could create these from scratch, but we've uh, create a set of standard spatial variables which are inside PyBAM automatically, so you can just load these up. And if you look at these, uh, you can just hit tab once you've hit dot, and this will bring up all the sort of standard spatial variables there. So you can see Xn in the negative electrodes. So if we if we, uh, if we got that, we can see a little bit of information about what that spatial variable is. But that's kind of under the hood stuff, and we only don't really need to care too much about it. Um, okay, so basically, I'm just going to create a dictionary where each of these these variables 
have a set of points associated with it. So I'm going to do the coarsest thing I can possibly do. Um, just for one, the sake of speed, and two, to show you the, the type of effect so this is going to have, which is that it will, instead of having really smooth solutions, it will make the solutions much more, more granular. Uh, and you'll have kind of uh, uh, jumps and stuff in this, well, not jumps, but uh, you'll see in a second. Okay, so I can now just do that. And now I can just pass the var points in. Uh, there, do sim.solve and sim.plot. And I'm just going to plot the electrolyte concentration in moles per meters cube because I think that's the one which best shows off the type of effect we've got here. Uh, so we've only put three points in every domain. So if I click up here, we can kind of see this. There's a it's a bit more jagged, uh, and that's the that's basically the effect of this. And you've now got one point here, one one point here, one point here. But as you increase the number of points, this will get smoother and smoother, and you'll get a more accurate solution. Uh, so more accuracy tends to correspond to the the, the model running slower. Uh, so you might, depending on your application, you want to have a play around with with those. All right, the final thing uh, that I'm going to show you how to change is the solver. So the solver, uh, the e easiest way to solvers are available is actually to come back to the PyBAM documentation, which uh, Rob showed you how to access via the, the GitHub repository, and just come down to this uh, solvers uh, bit of documentation here. And that's going to tell you all the solvers which are available. So I'm only going to change the to the Cassati solver. Uh, so that tells us that if we load up a PyBAM dot class, a PyBAM class Cassati solver, that's how we're going to going to use that solver. Uh, yeah. So you could also see what the the simulation object requires by looking at the the documentation for that. Okay. And again, if we bring up documentation for the Cassati solver, there's there's a lot of information on, there's a lot of other options on how you could configure this solver for whatever you want, setting the tolerances, et cetera. That's a little bit complicated to, to now to talk about, but uh, you can look into the documentation on this if you're interested. But probably the mode which is the thing you'll most switch in and out is the safe mode and the fast mode. So there's two modes. So mode is just a string it accepts as, as an argument, and it's either safe or it's fast. Uh, so if it's safe, what it'll do is it'll take little small steps in the time integration and check that you aren't crossing any events. So if you're doing a, an experiment like CCCV, this is going to take a little small step and check you haven't reached the voltage that you want it to reach in your CCCV thing. Uh, however, if you want, if you're just going to run a drive cycle where you don't really need to check, you've just got a pre-prescribed a pre current, you can just use the fast mode and that's going to just take a very big integration step uh, under the hood uh, automatically. So this is so uh, you can see where there's might be certain situations where you want to use one over the other, depending on what you're you're actually doing. OK, so I'm going to set the mode to fast and I'm actually going to use yeah, the FN model here. Uh, OK, and then I'm just going to do sim equals pybam dot simulation. Plug in my model. We know that simulation also accepts a solver object. And we pass in the solver. And then I'm going to do sim.solve and sim.plot. I'm just going to uh, just plot them all. Yeah. For some reason, the plotting seems to be particularly slow on mine today. As you saw on uh, Tino's, uh, Tino's notebook, it was quite quick. Uh, so it just depends on what you've got running on your laptop, I guess. Um, but yeah, this will plot. It's, the solving is done instantly. The plotting is just something else which seems to be taking uh, a long time on my particular computer at this moment. But the solve time was incredibly quick there. All right, finally, let's get onto this discussion of how you would go about adding your own parameter set. So at the moment, uh, if you want to add your parameter set to PyBAM, 
if you're just playing around, as I've mentioned earlier, if you're just playing around on your own on your own uh, repository, probably the easiest thing to do is just to to create a dictionary. Where we begin this? Um, yeah, is to create a dictionary and pass it in as a set of values um, into this parameter values class. And that will work in your own script and that'll work uh, as you would expect. So it's probably the easiest thing to do. But if you want to do something a bit more that, that can actually be finally merged into PyBAM and contribute, uh, I recommend that you come to the PyBAM repository. And then if you go into, uh, if you go down to the, the installation instructions, there's a developer install. And here you can, uh, it recommends you get clone the repository. So when you do that and follow the rest of the instructions to install PyBAM, what you'll get is you'll get this, you'll get this entire PyBAM, uh, you'll get a folder which appears on your computer called PyBAM uh, in, in this, in, with, with this title here. And all the stuff inside that folder will be exactly what's on inside here. And then you can go ahead and you can look at, uh, follow the folder structure going through PyBAM into inputs, into, now you can see there's drive cycles here, uh, there's um, some uh, parameter values here. So if we go into parameter values, lithium ion, uh, let's look at cathodes. Okay, and now if we, if we were to return to this, um, this place here where we looked at the chemistry, uh, yep, we can see that these names, the graphite, Kim, uh, 2011 or the cathodes NCA Kim 2011 that actually corresponds to a folder name here. So if you put your if you put your set of parameters in a folder with this name, then you can then you can access that access that set of parameters for that particular uh, part of the, um, the the battery model for the cathode, for example. And if you go inside this folder, so you you get to see these these different um, uh, these different. Uh, these, these this set of files here, and particular in particular, that's not a very nice one for some reason. Let's look at uh, this one. In particular, you see you get this. Uh, there's a CSV file. So this just renders it a bit nicely online here on GitHub, but it's just a it's just a straight comma separated values file, and each row corresponds to a different variable. We've got the name, which or is the name which is going to be referred to uh, in the in the uh, by the PyBAM models, and then we have a value. So you see some of these values are just scalar values, but there's also the option to, again, use this keyword data to say, okay, I want to use uh, some measured uh, data, so just a, a CSV file. So if we go back to this, the rest of the files in this domain, in this uh, folder, rather, we can see that there's, a, there's a, an OCP in the form of a CSV file, and that's what that uh, name here is referring to. Okay, and likewise, there's a function um, keyword you can use, and then reference. So this is the NCO diffusivity, and we can see that we can now put any Python function. And again, you just need to make sure that the inputs are going to be the same as the inputs required by the model by looking through the model and using that model.info uh, helper helper function, or by looking at the source code if you're uh, inclined to do so. Um, all right, and I just want to make a comment again about this, finally, just about these drive cycles. Uh, so if you want to add your own CSV file for a drive cycle, uh, you can stick it inside this drive cycles folder within the inputs. And you can see this just basically a CSV file with time and the current corresponding at that time. And uh, the name US06, if we come back in here, uh, that just is going to correspond with uh, the name that we used uh, to reference that current data here. Okay, uh, right. So that is everything that I wanted to cover. Um, that's just a bit, little bit about how you can uh, go go about finding settings to change, changing parameter sets, changing particular parameters into uh, scalars, functions, or uh, using CSV files for as the input. And also how you can change some of the, the, the underlying numerical settings, such as the grids and um, yeah, such as the grids, the grid points and the solver in order to play around with your, your uh, to make, in order to play around with the, the, the options in order to try and make your simulation um, 
appropriate for the problem that you're solving. All right, so let's see, what's the, what is the plan next? Uh, yeah, so I think uh, I was finishing at 230 because Tom's not doing his thing anymore, I think. And then uh, I'm going to pass over to Rob for the closing remarks. Um, yeah. So, was there any questions as well from anybody uh, on this? Uh, Okay, I'll, I'll uh, stop sharing my screen now. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask on on uh, Slack or, or or on the GitHub whenever you want. Right. Cool. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, um, right, I'll just start sharing my screen again. Uh, cool. Can people see that? Yep, I can see that. Fine. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to finish off with some comments about how you might want to contribute to PyBAM. So this has been a user workshop, but hopefully after you've started using it, you might like to contribute to it. Um, so I've got a few slides about the workflow for doing that and how you can make sure that your contributions are recognized in terms of publications and citations, etc. Um, and then after that, I think we've just got a bit of free time for discussion. Um, these slides also finish off with a few of the things that we're thinking about doing in the near term future. So hopefully you can sort of kickstart discussion from uh, things there in terms of features people would like or just general questions about what you've seen today. Um, oops. Cool, right. So the current workflow for contributing to PyBAM is um, that you create an issue on the GitHub repository and um, where you can discuss your proposal um, before any coding is done. And, and then from that, you create a branch of PyBAM on your own fork where you can make all of your own changes locally. And on that fork, you can implement your own work. And you know, if you're putting in something that you're working on for a particular publication, you can keep that fork private until that publication is out and then you can merge it into the main code. So you don't need to worry about you know, putting your work out there in the open source main code base until you want it to go in there. So you can implement your work on this branch. Um, you can ask us for help in the issue or on the Slack channel, and we can we can help get you started. Um, in order to make sure you get um, citations for your work in PyBAM when people use it, you can add your um, bibtech entry, so your bibliography item, to this uh, file citations.txt, so you can put your reference in there. And then you can register these in parts of code that use your paper. Um, and this just means that when people use PyBAM, um, there's um, an example of how to do this in a few slides time, but you can request from PyBAM which papers do I need to cite for the functionality that I've used. Um, you always need to write tests for your code, um, and you can look at the examples in the test folder if you've cloned the repository or look at the repository to see the kind of things that are there. And then once you're ready for your code to be merged into the main repository, you can create a pull request and someone will review it, and then we get it in there, and it's in PyBAM for everyone in the community to use. But again, you know, you don't need to do this pull request until you're happy to, to put your code out there. So you can keep it private for as long as you like. Um, something we have, I think we have one of these maybe, um, is implementation days. Um, I guess these will be um, in the near future. But the idea is, is that, you know, you've created an issue. You might have started doing some work um, in trying to implement it. Maybe you've uh, coded up a simple test case, but you're not sure how to integrate that into the Python framework. Um, so really the idea of the implementation day is once you've got to that point and then we can be there um, virtually on hand to help um, overcome that barrier so that you can get your work into PyBAM. And these are going to be kind of organized in response to any requests that we get. Um, and we'll probably work on a, a drop-in basis. So once we get a few requests, we'll set a day or an afternoon aside where people can come in with specific tasks that they want help with and we can help get that implemented in PyBAM. Um, and as Martin mentioned at the start of this workshop, we're going to have a weekly sort of hotline where there's an hour where someone will definitely be on Slack to answer any questions you've got, um, either from a user perspective or a developer perspective. Um, and most of the time, someone is on Slack anyway. So if you do have any questions, just post them in the technical questions channel and you'll probably get an answer pretty quickly. Um, but hopefully that's there to help people get their code into PyBAM. So I mentioned earlier about making sure 
your work is credited correctly. Um, so once you've added your work, this is an example of uh, Ferran put in some parameter set for the LGM50 cell. So he did this on his own fork. He put in a reference to his paper, this Chen 2021 in the citations thing. Um, it gets registered in the when you use this parameter set. So in somewhere where the parameter set, you see this pybam.citations.register citation. So that picks that citation from this dictionary, uh, which is the image on the left on the second row. So it picks out the right citation. And then if I use some code, so in this top block here, I've loaded up the SPME model with this parameter set Chen 2020. And then if at the end of the script, I put pybam.print citations, this will return all the citations that I've used in that particular piece of code. So in particular, it returns this bibtech entry at the bottom for this paper um, that Faram was on. And it also, you know, um, give you the relevant citations for any models you might have used um, and for any of the underlying code that you might have used. So if you use a particular solver that's got a paper um, attributed to it, then it'll tell you to cite that paper as well. So um, this is just, I guess, to reassure you that if you do spend time um, contributing to PyBAM, um, not only is it good for the, the community because everyone can start using your work, but you will be, you'll get the relevant citations when people are using your model. Um, I guess we all like citations. Um, so yeah, this is a slide about lower barrier to entry. So there's probably some of you on this workshop who may have tried to either use PyBAM before or tried to contribute to PyBAM before and found the learning curve a little bit steep. Um, one of the problems when we had the first workshop that we did was that installation was pretty hard. Hopefully that's a lot more straightforward now. You can pip install it. Uh, it works on Windows, Mac and Linux. The basic version doesn't require you to use Windows subsystem for Linux anymore. Um, but some of the more optional features do require that. Um, and we also have a Jupyter Hub that allows access through a browser with no install, which you might use for future workshops so that you can just code live in, in a Jupyter notebook without needing to install it yourself. Um, so that's the installation side of things. Um, the other point that people got stuck on, I guess, when they contributed was um, they found the submodel structure a bit confusing. And I think that is a bit of a barrier to entry. If you first load up PyBAM and try and look through the submodel structure, it's a little bit intimidating. Um, now we are working on, on simplifying that, but something else we've done is put in some new models called basic SPM and basic DFN, um, and these define the entire model in a single script. So they don't use the sub, um, submodel structure of PyBAM, it's just all there in one big script. Um, but one way of adding your um, model or your extension to a model in PyBAM might be to take one of these basic models, um, hard code in all of your changes into that single script. And then once you've done that, you can come to us and we can help you pick out the bits that are new from that script and turn it into a submodel, which can then be used within the underlying submodel structure of PyBAM. So um, hopefully it's easier now to start contributing to PyBAM and start editing some of the models that are in there because um, we can help you um, find your way around the submodel structure. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to say on sort of contributing to PyBAM. So hopefully some of you will be looking to do that in the future. Um, so here's just a slide about things we're thinking of implementing in the short term. And then from this, we'll sort of kick off an open discussion, I guess, for the remainder of the, the workshop session. Um, I don't know if we're doing that via Slack or via people just shouting the loudest over Teams, but I guess we can decide that. Um, anyway, so things we're thinking about are doing uh, EIS and nonlinear EIS, um, implementing various different degradation mechanisms for use in any of the models. Um, people are thinking about doing mechanics. Well, we want to extend to other geometries. So at the minute, we're sort of doing either 1D models or we're doing uh, single layer pouch cells. So we might extend this to jelly rolls or packs, for example, and that will either be through um, sort of natively in PyBAM or via coupling with other external software packages. Um, we always want to put in more parameters. So if you know of any particular good references, um, one way you might like to get your head around what's going on in PyBAM is to start implementing a parameter set yourself, and we can help with that or you can just point to a parameter set and we can assist with uh, getting that in. Uh, we want to start exploiting the fact that we've got access to the Jacobian and to do things like parameter estimation, sensitivity analysis. Uh, we want to link in with experimental data, either through a database um, or some other means, but to try and tie in more closely with experiments anyway. Um, and then we're always trying to make general improvements to the framework. Um, but I think that's just a flavor of the things we're thinking about in the short term. Um, so I'll stop sharing my screen at that point, and then we can try and have some kind of organized discussion um, for the remainder of the session. Um, but yeah, 
before we do that just thanks very much for coming and paying attention it's probably very difficult to pay attention for this long virtually um so yeah thanks and uh, we'll have some discussion now do we want to start discussions on slack maybe if someone like posts questions and then we can um discuss them as they're posted in slack but over teams if that makes sense pick some topics to discuss yeah that's a good idea yeah that makes sense cool if anyone has any um thoughts about things that um They'd, they'd want to see in, in PyBAM, uh, that'd be really useful. Or if you just had questions on the material that's been presented, um, just, yeah, feel free to post them in the Slack channel. So uh, Jacqueline's put a question on the Slack channel um, about uh, do you have any suggested introductory links for people who have never used Python before? Um, so I'd probably point you towards the uh, Software Carpentries web page. Um, hang on, I'll get a link. So Software Carpentries, um, is is an organization they put up lots of um great tutorials uh that you can work through in your own time on various aspects of, of software carpentry things like uh, command line with unix uh, version control and they've also got a uh, programming with python course as well which is good okay okay so the i'll put the link on the slack Yeah, so if um, does anyone else have any tips on introductory Python materials? I have a, a question for Rob. Um, you mentioned in one of the later slides about having access to the Jacobian um, to enable uh, sort of parameter estimation. Um, as a non-mathematician, I wonder if you could just explain a little bit more about that. Maybe I can ask Tino to explain more about that because he probably will give a better answer than I will be able to. Sorry, Tino. Sorry, I accidentally quit the meeting and rejoined, so I missed the question. Um, what do you mean by access to the Jacobian for parameter estimation? Uh, so, uh, so this isn't implemented yet, but uh, it's something I'm going to start working on soon. Is uh, when you do parameter estimation, basically there's two. You can either do it derivative based or derivative free, um, and so. When, I'm when we're talking about the Jacobian there, I guess other words for it would be the sensitivities or the adjoints, and it's essentially helping the optimization algorithm uh, step in the optimal directions to find parameters. So at the moment, uh, you can only really use derivative free algorithms for parameter estimation with PyBAM uh, because uh, 
we don't provide the the uh, adjoints for the for the models, uh, but we're hoping to put those in there soon, and then uh, that will allow more efficient parameter estimation, essentially. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, mostly. <laughs> so so it's like it's not it's not a Jacobian in the sense of the Jacobian for the uh, ODEs for the DAEs. Uh, it's the sensitivities and adjoints for the uh, optimization algorithm. Okay, cool. But the, the expression tree structure allows you to obtain those uh, as well. It's just a little bit more difficult because you have to get the do it through the DAE solver. Um, mm. And that'll allow you to do parameter sweeps a little bit more intelligently than just sort of blanket um, scattergun approach kind of thing. Uh, well, it's for, I mean, parameter sweeps, I guess you are, you're just setting a set, a set of parameters you want to sweep over. So yeah, but this would allow you to, for example, fit a model to data, uh, which you can already do, but at the moment you have to use derivative free algorithms. Uh, and in theory, this would allow you to use derivative based algorithms to do data fitting and that kind of thing. Okay. So if you had an optimization problem, um, would the plan be to sort of use a, a separate optimization package and then call PyBAM um, in, a, in a kind of clever way? Or yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So um, I've already done this. Uh, I've been using uh, PyBAM for parameter estimation um, already using uh, Pints which is another uh, package that uh, I developed with. Um, so if anyone um, is is doing that feel free to contact me as well so i think there's another question on the slack um from zachary brown uh, asking if there are any uh, current eis examples in pyban uh there aren't at the moment uh i guess i don't know if toby is online so i guess toby kirk was looking at that kind of thing i don't know if maybe rob if you know more about that um and um, yes yeah, so there's not a specific example or tool that does eis sort of for you as a command um i guess you could do it by either specifying an experiment or specifying a current function rather to just simulate directly in the time domain um eis at the moment um but i think the idea would be that we'd put something in that automates doing it for you and generates the sort of typical plots and data analysis afterwards that you would normally want to do. Um, but that's not in there at the moment. Um, but you can simulate EIS just by specifying, you know, some kind of sinusoidal current or whatever. Um, but yeah. Okay, well, I mean, I think we're we're available on the Slack, so everyone has access to the Slack, um, and you can ask uh, questions or uh, even just direct message any of us directly if you want to ask anyone some specific questions that you don't want to put to the whole channel. Uh, is there anything else to, to close off or? I guess just to, uh, to reiterate as well, we'll be doing the uh, the workshops, uh, sorry, the, the drop-in session, two till three every Wednesday. Um, so uh, you can ask questions then, but also feel free to ask questions outside of that time as well. That's just an a lot of time that there definitely will be somebody there. But um, yeah. And also like if, if you have uh, like a new feature that you're thinking of uh, implementing or uh, you find a bug or anything like that. There's also the issues on the GitHub repository that you can put those things on. Yeah, and also don't be, uh, don't be shy to post issues, even if you think it's a stupid question, because 
other people might have the same stupid question and if they can just see the issue uh, that'd be easier than everyone asking the same question on Slack. Uh, I, I personally always find it to look at some closed issues on other packages uh, to see how to do certain things. Cool. Well, um, I guess if there's there's no other questions, um, thanks everyone for for coming along and um, yeah, just get in, get in touch with us in the future if you have a question. Okay. So thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.